Well, good morning. So uh, today uh, we're going to discuss about uh, strategy balance score, uh, scorecard and profitability analysis. So uh, two main areas. Uh, one of the tool uh, management use for using the information generated by the many uh, managerial accountants, uh, which we call it as a balance scorecard uh, in which they uh, uh, see all the important aspects that can affect the profitability of the business. So we will see this one as a balance scorecard technique or a tool, and then we analyze the profitability with respect to how that's going to be uh, increased with the growth in uh, the sales or revenue or uh, or the price effects or growth in the uh, growth of a price effects. And as well as we see that how the productivity is going to add up this. So. Uh, this is the main uh, idea of this whole uh, topic, uh, which is strategy, balance scorecard and profitability analysis. So uh, let's start and see that how it works. And uh, at the end, we, we also try to solve uh, one question uh, related to this uh, uh, profitability analysis. Uh, so uh, these are the learning objectives of this uh, chapter. Explain how the relative strength of a competitive force forces help managers identify strategic alternatives. So uh, in this uh, strategy part, we are uh, emphasizing that uh, the the manager should aware of the uh, the competitors, and we have to develop a strategy based on the potential or the advantages of our competitors. So that's a, one aspect of these forces that play important role in uh, developing strategies for the promotion of a business. Uh, then we try to understand this new term here as a re-engineering, that what is meant by re-engineering and how we can uh, utilize those uh, uh, tools to uh, um, increase or uh, improve the uh, product uh, as compared to our com uh, competitors, or we can say that we want to develop the uh, different uh, differentiation between the products of our competitors and our products. Then in the third uh, uh, objective, we got to understand the four perspective of balance scorecard. Balance scorecard has a four different perspectives. A perspective from profitability, perspective from the profitability definitely belongs to the owners. Uh, a perspective uh, from the uh, customer point of view. Excuse me, <laughs> sorry. So understand the four perspectives. So we will see that from different perspectives like owners, uh, business, uh, uh, the management or the employee as well as the customer. So we will see these four perspectives and that's what we call it as a balance score. Uh, balance scorecard means we are giving importance not only to one aspect like a profit making or cost reduction. We are emphasizing on all the aspects because that is important for the business. We don't want to sell a product once for uh, once to our customers. We want to retain our customers. We want to the satisfaction of our customers. Secondly, we also want that our employees should be satisfied. And we see that how these all uh, different uh, prospectives of uh, the customer and the employee and all, all contribute to the financial outcome of the business, which is in the interest of the owners. So we'll see this. Evaluate stat uh, strategic success at implementing a cost leadership strategy using balance scorecard. So we will see that if we are, uh, so there are two types of leadership, like one is a value leadership in which we are emphasizing on the quality or the uh, differentiation of our product from our competitors. And the other leadership is of a cost reduction or a cost uh, leadership like in which the emphasis is that how we can reduce the cost. So we'll see that how the uh, balance scorecard tool uh, help us to understand these two different types of uh, leaderships. One is cost, so we emphasize on the cost. Analyze the result from a specific productivity and capacity control strategies to achieve balance score or card expectations. So we also uh, talk about uh, productivity and the capacity. Like, as I mentioned, we want to learn uh, the profitability analysis with the help of this. Now, before going into detail now, what we want to see, we want to uh, explain what is strategy. Like, uh, specifies how an organization create value for customers while differentiating itself from our competitors. 
a uh, very common example which, which you heard like uh, you have to create a differentiation and this we see in a very commonly uh, there's a one coffee you can get it from Tim Horton and there's a one coffee you can get it from Starbucks. So Starbucks is charging a higher price than the Tim Horton. The reason is that they create a value for customers and the customer believes in it and for that reason they are paying high price for it and they differentiate although both are coffees but they differentiate it uh, uh, and differentiate it from the others coffee and that's like a competitor's coffee. so a thorough understanding of the industry is critical to implement success success booster so strategist or the the one who is developing strategy for the business uh, must understand the whole industry uh, quite in deep so that whenever they're developing a strategy they know each and every aspect of the whole industry not only the business of of which uh, they are developing a strategy but the whole industry their competitors and the customers and all these things they have to know then they can develop a good strategy if a person is not aware of the industry not aware of the competitors how they can develop a strategy so it's very important that we have a complete knowledge of the uh, industry as well as the competitors and all these uh, 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 stakeholders involved in that should know and then we can say that it's a good uh, strategy or you can develop a good strategy now before developing a good strategy you have to understand what is your core competency because core competency is the way that you can use to uh, differentiate your product differentiate your services from your competitors so that's overlap between corporate strength maximize opportunity and counter threat so this is also what uh, in another uh, in a business model we also use SWOT analysis uh, like strength weaknesses opportunities and threats so we have to do this SWOT analysis type of things in order to see what is our strength of the business and how we can uh, what are the challenges or what are the threats from our competitors and how we can convert these threats uh, into opportunities so that we can come uh, successful so this this is the way that uh, you have to identify your core competence uh, so that you can compete with them now there's a michael porter uh, is a, a management a, a consultant or a, um, so academics from uh, teaching management they developed a uh, we call it as a uh, five uh, uh, the michael developed this uh, strategy what we call it as a porters yes michael porter uh, the, uh, a strategy has identified the five competitive forces five competitive forces michael porter uh, harvard uh, business professor uh, leading expert on strategy has identified five uh, and we call it as a, a, a five forces of uh, porter's five forces so if you see that here there is a, a, a intensity of force of the competitive rivalry so this uh, uh, pentagon uh, with the five sides uh, is an institution or an organization or a business and five different forces are going to apply in some cases one of the forces is more harder than other forces but it is uh, that the the business is in, in between all these forces uh, so the if we look at this uh, the the force the threat of existing competitors like those who are already in the business and they are producing a very similar or substitutable uh, product uh, in the market so we have to uh, face uh, the pressure from those uh, organizations uh, there is another pressure or um, uh, force that we can uh, uh, feel is the threat of a potential entrance like a new firms can enter into that business so that's again a great challenge like if a new firm comes with a new uh, 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 product or with a uh, uh, new ideas of the same uh, product so by this way we are facing that challenge as well uh, the other one is the buyer's power of dictation or we we call it in a very technical way monopsony uh, monopsony is a very similar concept like a monopoly you know in a monopoly there is a single seller uh, and that seller has a power of a market power that they can dictate what price they want to charge for uh, its product uh, same is the case when there is a one buyer uh, then we call it as a monopsony so if there are very few buyers of your product 
then you are facing the same challenge like a monopsony that the buyers are dictating your uh, their terms like uh, because they are the only buyers. Then uh, the other thing is that your suppliers from where you are buying the products, raw material and all these things uh, is uh, having a monopoly power or uh, having a market power. So if there are very few suppliers of the product uh, that you require to produce your own product, so in that case, you are also facing a challenge from those uh, market powers of those suppliers. And the last thing is like the fifth one is the threat of substitution substitutes like, uh, you know, it's a innovative world every time, every uh, uh, year or every uh, after a few uh, 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 after some times new products are coming with the better features, with the better attributes, you know, all these things are coming. So it's always a challenge for the firms operating in this. And uh, uh, there's a, a very famous economist uh sean peter and sean peter described this type of uh threat of substitutes as a destructive uh creative creation uh why because the new product with new feature with new technology they destroy the existing one so that's always there is a, a way that uh, we our products is going to be replaced and we see in our life many products uh started with the um, so much uh, demand, but gradually their demands uh, going to be zero because there is no use of that product no more. So there is a cycle, life cycle of a product, uh, and and we know that uh, sometimes the life cycles are bigger for some product, but sometimes the life cycles are very short depending upon the nature. So the businesses are always uh, facing this challenge that there is a, a substitute for their product. Now, as I mentioned, there are two types of leadership uh, way that you want to run your organization in order to increase the profitability or a profit or the performance of the business uh, because we measure the performance of the business in terms of the profit. So value leadership, that's uh, as I mentioned that we put more emphasis on product differentiation, like a product is different from others. Uh, an organization's ability to offer a product or a service perceived by its customer to be superior and unique. And I just gave you an example of a uh, uh, Starbucks and the Tim Hortons. Uh, and unique relative to the product or services of its competitor. So this type of leadership is that we are emphasizing on our product differentiation and we are uh, convincing or, or make it sure that the, uh, the consumer is perceived it as a better quality and that's all leads to a brand loyalty and willingness of customer to pay high prices. That's, uh, you know, many people are very brand loyal, very brand conscious, uh, so they, they spend more money uh, in order to get the same brand. And uh, nowadays it's very common among the teens and uh, many, many uh, age groups like uh, people want to buy only this one, this one, this one. Uh, even the uh, alternatives are very cheaper, but they only want to go for a particular brand. So that's a value leadership. The other leadership is called as a cost leadership in which uh, uh, the, the business is emphasizing on our cost reduction. So uh, emphasis is uh, an organization's ability to achieve lower cost relationship to competitors through productivity and efficiency improvements. Elimination of waste and tight cost control leads to a lower selling price. Now for a very just an example, like uh, we can find out two uh, retail stores like a Canadian Tire and the Walmart. Now, if I ask uh, any student, and uh, normally when I am in a class, uh, I ask that, what is a, uh, um, what comes to your mind when we are saying Walmart? Uh, most of the people are saying that low price, right? You can get a product, uh, same product or a similar product in a Walmart at a low price. But if you go to the Canadian Canadian Tire or any other uh, other uh, th these type of uh, stores, uh, you will find a same product with a, with a little bit higher price. Now, so these are the two different uh, uh, leadership styles. One is saying, no, our product is good, so we are charging high price. Uh, the Walmart saying, no, I want to provide a consumer at a lowest price, and the, they, they adopt different strategies and uh, the, uh, different ways that how they can reduce their cost. It's not necessarily that the product is cheaper, or a product is substandard or a product is sub quality, uh, but it is it is possible that they uh, introduce different ways through which they can reduce the cost 
without compromising the quality. Uh, like uh, uh, Walmarts are very famous that they don't have a stores in downtown areas uh, because downtown uh, renting a place is quite high as compared to they love to open their uh, um, stores in suburbs, suburbs where they can rent a place at a cheaper price. So this is a one way. This is just a one way of reducing the cost. So there are many ways that they can reduce the cost. Now, how they can uh, reduce the cost? So uh, like uh, we just uh, in economics, we call it as economies of scale. Economies of scale is a uh, is a way that we can describe when you produce uh, quantity more and more or sell more and more. Uh, uh, what is happening? Your fixed cost is going to decrease because fixed cost is fixed when the number of units are increasing. So per unit co fixed cost is increasing, decreasing. So economies of scale, we can say that is a point where your average total cost, average total cost is reached to the minimum point. And it can be achieved only when you are producing something in large quantity. With a small quantity, you cannot achieve that. So uh, like Walmart selling uh, thousands or millions of the products at different uh, all over the world. So they are achieving this economies of scale. Uh, so economies of scale, uh, we see that uh, China is uh, a world exporter, uh, export everywhere in the world. And because of this, they are able to produce in bulk, in large quantity. And by this way, they are able to achieve this economies of scale. Now, the second uh, idea which can reduce your cost is economies of scope. Now, economies of scope is resulting from designing new product. You are launching a new product, uh, but that is uh, that product is able to use your other expertise, your other resources, so that you are easy. You have an advantageous point other than your competitors who are just selling those products. Uh, so this way we can say that uh, there is an economy of scope. For example, like at auto manufacturers uh, started uh, producing their own tires. So they, they install a factory for uh, tire manufacturing and they say, OK, whatever, wherever we are producing our, our automobiles, so we're going to use the tire of our own company. So that's a economies of scope. So they, they set up a system that they can sell or they can sell it on the market. Uh, a very good example from our daily life is that, you know, the Lay's Chips, uh, Lay's Chips, uh, who is owned by Pepsi Cola. So Pepsi knows that we have a network of our distribution. We know our, uh, the, the brand loyalty. We know the people know our brand. So why not? We can sell a very different product, but using our these resources, we have a good marketing team. We have a good distribution channel. We have a good uh, representation in the world. So why not we launch it? They, they, they uh, did a great job in that. So there's in the chips uh, market for chips. There's a the, the Lays have a big name and they attain this name because uh, at the back there is a Pepsi Cola. Uh, the 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 business uh, is owned by Pepsi Cola, so this is the way that uh, economies of scope scope helps uh, in uh, doing this. Now, how we can develop the uh, good strategy or the better strategy as compared to uh, um, uh, our competitors? Uh, so these are the steps you have to follow to develop a strategy. So selecting an appropriate strategy. Identify the problem. So first of all, we have to identify whether we are not making good business. We are uh, reducing uh, uh, our sales are reducing, our costs are increasing, our profit is reducing, or there's an employees turnover uh, is very high. So there are many uh, type of problems an organization can face. So we have to identify the problem. Choose a strategy, value, or a cost leadership. So uh, in that case, what you have to do. Uh, if you want to keep a good quality staff, so then you have to pay more. So that's a, you have to make a choice whether you go for a low low cost or a high value. So that's your gather and analyze uh, relevant information. So data nowadays uh, we we all know that most of the decisions what we are making is based on our data analysis or uh, there is a very uh, em emerging uh, profession or. Uh, yeah, the profession which is uh, quite in demand is data analytics. And now many universities are offering some master's programs or undergrad programs that are very specific to data analytics. Uh, why? Because nowadays we have uh, uh, tons of data uh, because every scanning of a product or um, the, uh, and wherever you tap your card. So they, 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 these are creating data. Now these data uh, should be analyzed in order to get some 
useful information. And by this way, you can uh, use those uh, useful information in order to promote your products. You know that these uh, different types of loyalty cards or or even if you search on your Google. <clears throat> so whatever you search on a Google, uh, next time you see that on your Facebook or on your Twitter or on your uh, Instagram, you get this very similar type of advertisement. The reason that they they gather this data that this person or this login and is searching this type of product, so they they uh, use this data and give you a options, very different options for this. Even uh, sometimes it happens like you are using your phone and you are uh, um, searching and uh, in one device, but the other devices can also uh, give you the same uh, type of thing. So that's again from from uh, data uh, gathering and then analyzing and then and uh, using those uh, analysis uh, in order to promote your product. Uh, make predictions about the future. Definitely, we have to uh, uh, think uh, uh, in a way that you can be a foresighted. You see afar, not just a, a very short sighted to look at very close, uh, like uh, six months or a uh, uh, year. But you have to think over a period of a five year, ten year that uh, what is going to uh, happen to this, the 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 uh, the quality uh, or the uh, demand for our product. So that's a way that you have to be able and those who are very good in these things to uh, take uh, care of all these forces and all these uh, things in a far uh, future and make predictions correctly or uh, based on the data uh, you know we use data to analyze and we can figure it out some models and based on that models we can uh, predict uh, some future aspects so uh, <clears throat> short life cycles of technology product means that the customer wait only a short time for a better product. Uh, and that's why the, the these uh, tech companies and all these companies, uh, those who are in in uh, the products which are very short lived, uh, they are always in a struggle of finding out uh, or uh, spending millions of dollars in research to find out a new product or find out a in new innovative uh, features in our product. Uh, and the best example can you see that uh, Apple introduced some new model and immediately the Samsung has to launch a new model in order to be keep in market. So that's a that's a way that we have to uh, be a competitive in the market. So make the decision highly automated process, create economies of scale and scope and cost leadership strategy should be implemented. So that's possible that when we are using automated process. Uh, implement the decision, evaluate performance and learn. That is also very important that when you make a decision, you implement it and after implementing after some time, then you analyze that what is an impact of our this decision, whether it is going to be a, a, a good decision or become a fruitful or it is going to be a, a waste or this decision has some and drawbacks. So we have to revisit uh, our decision. So that's a very important. Uh, reduce opportunity for uh, errors and improve quality and speed. So that's the objective of uh, evaluating performance and learn. Now these are the key uh, strategies, uh, key uh, strategy map for key success factors. Now, if we see this whole map, it is important to understand uh, the whole map is uh, like we see here uh, four different areas on our uh, left side. Uh, financial perspective, customers perspective, internal business perspective and learning and growth perspective. So these are the four areas uh, we as uh, in the beginning we mentioned that we want to learn from all the perspectives. So financial perspective definitely taking care of the how much revenue we are generating, how much profit and net income we are making or how much our cost is increasing or decreasing. So that's a financial uh, perspective. Then in a customer's perspective is that how much the customer is satisfied, uh, how uh, much new customers we are adding up, how much our market share is increasing. So this is the customer's perspective. Uh, internal business perspective that we have to see uh, how much is the yield, uh, order delivery time, on-time delivery, service response time. So all these are internal business uh, uh, perspective, like how we can improve these perspectives. And the the last one is related to employee, and that's what we call as a learning and growth perspective. So employee satisfaction rating, uh, percentage of employees trained in process and quality management, 
percentage of the work for, uh, workers empowered and percentage of manufacturing process with real time feedback. So these are the perspective related to the uh, learning and growth. So, you know, in the world, those organizations which are very successful, they have their own learning centers. They train their employees and with that training, they uh, they improve their quality of their service. Uh, they improve their uh, uh, workforce uh, in their skill sets. And by this way, they improve. You see all these arrows, what these arrows are reflecting. So I go over the arrows once. You see uh, net operating income from productivity gain how we can gain revenue growth or operating income growth. So these are all the financial perspective, like if you want to evaluate it. Now, how these all can improve is that if, how we can uh, in, improve our revenue growth or a sales in a, in a simple way. Sales, how we can improve it. If our customer is satisfied, if we get a new customer and if our market share is increasing. So by this way, these all contribute towards the revenue growth and revenue growth definitely is going to co convert into our operating income growth. Now, how we can satisfy the customers? We can satisfy the customers if we improve these things like the quality of product yield, uh, delivery time, service time, on time delivery, all these services, all these features going to help us to attain this uh, uh, customer satisfaction, existing customer satisfaction, uh, customer, new customers can come in by the uh, uh, good reputation and also increase our market share. So you see the, these are links. Now these uh, four points are linked to percentage of process with uh, advanced controls and number of major improvements in manufacturing and business processes. So we can improve these timings or satisfaction of the customer with these tools. And this one, the number of major improvements in the business process, uh, in the manufacturing and business process is only possible if we have a highly satisfied customer uh, employees. And these highly satisfied employees can be obtained through their training, through their improvement in their skill set, through their proper compensation and all these things that is going to be contribute. Percentage of manufacturing process with the real feedback and we're getting re real empowerment not only the good skill set, but also empowerment that they're going to make and decisions, right? So these are all the things that we have to uh, keep it in mind when we are making decisions. Now, key success factors, KSFs and re-engineering. So as I mentioned in the, uh, we're going to learn the definition of this range. The different activities that occur at each tier of the uh, strategy map are often uh, referred to as a key success factor. So these all are, considered to be key success factors. These all uh, spots what we are discussing, which are act, uh, which are activities necessary for the successful execution of the strategy. Now, what is re-engineering or redesigning is the fundamental rethinking and redesigning of a business process to achieve improvements in, in critical measures such as cost, quality, speed, and customer satisfaction. So re-engineering, redesigning, that you redesign your process of uh, doing your business in such a way that it improves uh, the quality of the product. Uh, it improves the uh, uh, speed or the delivery time for the uh, customer. And ultimately, that quality and uh, good delivery uh, or a perfect service provided to the customer is going to improve our customer satisfaction. Uh, and also, also going to reduce the wastages and reduce the cost. So this way, we're gonna so now the balanced scorecard translate an organization's mission and strategy. Now we are focusing on uh, so far what we discussed is uh, if I repeat it, uh, so far what we discussed is that uh, uh, these uh, uh, management of any organization, uh, whatever the information they are getting from the uh, uh, these managerial uh, accountants, uh, they have to use that uh, information in order to develop strategies. So we see that uh, every organization has to develop a strategy and these strategies based on two leaderships. Uh, uh, one is the value leadership and the other one is a cost leadership. So it depends on how you are uh, developing your competency. Then we also discuss about the uh, Porter's five forces uh, like uh, competitors, monopsony, monopoly, uh, threat for substitutes and uh, threat from existing uh, or the potential uh, 
competitors. Then we also uh, see that uh, how these uh, key success factors are interrelated and ultimate objective is to increase the profit. But how we can increase the profit, uh, we have to improve our customer satisfaction. How we can improve the customer satisfaction if we improve our business processes, uh, delivery time, uh, service time, or uh, after service, uh, uh, after sales services, and all these things, if we make improvement through improvement in our processes of business, through improvement in our uh, manufacturing processes, and by this way, we uh, improve. Now, how we can improve these businesses, uh, manufacturing and services businesses, is that we uh, we uh, uh, train our employees. We uh, we uh, satisfy our uh, needs of our employees in such a way that when they are doing job, they are satisfied. A very simple example. If you go for any 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 place where you have to interact with the uh, uh, customer services or the front desk people, uh, if the front desk people are uh, satisfied, they are happy, they are greeting the uh, customers with a smiling face and uh, they are cooperating and try to uh, give a service like this that uh, they are really care about the customer. So what is going to happen? The customer is going to get go back uh, satisfied. Uh, so it means that the person who is serving the uh, customer should be also satisfied in order to make the customer satisfied. So that's very important. So these are all interrelated uh, uh, and not interrelated, but it is a, a upward moving uh, effects. Like if we satisfy the customer, that is going to improve our customer uh, uh, processes and processes improves our customer relationship and customer relationship is going to improve uh, our financials. All right, that's it. So now we, we see how we can uh, evaluate this. Now this is a tool we use to evaluation, not just to uh, see that how we can improve this or these key success uh, factors, uh, but also how we can uh, evaluate it. So KS, uh, KSFs, uh, the balance scorecard translates an organization mission and strategy. So mission, we already discussed how we develop the mission, how we develop the strategies into a set of performance measures that provides the framework for implementation, uh, implementing its strategy. It is called the balance scorecard because it's balanced the use of financial. Now, why we are using the word balanced? Because it's not just emphasizing on, on the financial aspects, but non-financial performance measures to evaluate the performance. So it is a balance between financial and non-financial uh, measures. So we see here that again, uh, the same, uh, 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 ESFs, uh, key success factors. Uh, but here we are saying that financial perspective, uh, creating organizational value for owners and stakeholder shareholders. As I mentioned, that shareholders or the owners are more interested in the profit. Uh, and intern, internal business processes ensure efficiency and quality of the value chain and customer's perspective adding value for the customer and learning and growth is investing in organizational infrastructure. So you see these are the things that where we can uh, invest and make uh, good money in order to satisfy the uh, owners or the shareholders uh, perspective. So let's uh, talk one by one all these uh, perspectives like a financial perspective. Evaluate the profitability of this uh, of the strategy and the creation of a share. So uh, now what we are doing, as I mentioned, it's a tool to evaluate the uh, strategy uh, with respect to the performance. Now, if we develop uh, any any particular strategy in order to uh, improve our uh, business, now we evaluate this strategy on the basis of uh, the financial perspective, customer's perspective, uh, internal perspective, and the uh, 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 learning and growth perspective, internal business pr perspective and uh, learning and growth perspective. So if we develop a strategy, uh, then we see that how we can uh, evaluate that strategy. The first thing is the financial perspective. Evaluate the profitability of the strategy. So we look at how much our profit is going to change with that strategy and the creation of shareholders value. So ultimately the profit is going to be translated into shareholders value. Use the major objective measures in the scorecard. The other three perspective eventually feed up feedback into this dimension. So uh, as we already discussed that uh, all these other three uh, uh, perspectives are 
uh, ultimately objective of this fourth one. Right? Why we want to satisfy our customer? Because we want to retain it. We want to uh, expand our customers through uh, this uh, reputation that we that our customers are very satisfied. So for that reason, customer satisfaction is not the objective. The objective is profit or a financial perspective, but through customer satisfaction. So identify targeted customer and market segment and measures the company's success in this segment. So we have to see from that. Focus on internal uh, operations that create. Now, internal business perspective, focus on internal operation that creates value for the customer that in turn further earns the financial perspective by increasing shareholders value. So include these uh, sub processes, innovation, operation and post sales services. So these are the articles. And the last one is a the learning and growth perspective identifies the capabilities the organization must excel at to achieve superior internal process that creates value for the customers and shareholders. Now, as we discussed uh, before, uh, just a, 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 a diagrammatic representation, uh, this learning and growth uh, process is going to helpful in improves our internal business processes. This internal business improvement in internal business processes is going to helpful in our increasing our customer satisfaction. And this customer satisfaction is going to translate into good results, financially good results. So this way that it's going to be helpful. Now this is a, a scorecard. Again, these scorecard is divided into four different uh, perspectives and we uh, take, uh, we are discussing here an example of a uh, corporation who is producing some uh, auto parts or uh, some computer ch chips. Uh, so we, uh, I want to explain uh, it a little bit more, but it's hard for me to read from there uh, because the screen in on screen is appears very small. So I'm going to read it from this uh, point one by one and discuss it. So the first thing we are uh, talking here is. Uh, financial perspective. Uh, what activities we can add up in order to um, uh, measure the performance of financial activities? Uh, so we uh, we divide these into four different columns. One is activities that uh, change, and the second uh, is a measure, and the uh, and the third one is a budgeted or a predicted that uh, if we adopt this strategy, what we can expect. Uh, so it's an expected, and the other one is an actual performance. So we uh, develop these four columns for each perspective. So first is uh, the financial perspective. So more effective capacity use, improved yield. So we uh, two million savings, but in actually we save two million and twelve thousand five hundred. Reduce utilized fixed cost, increase OI growth, uh, operating income growth. And we see that we 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 expect uh, three million increase, but we uh, in actual we did uh, three million and forty uh, four hundred and twenty thousand. Uh, strength customer relationship increase revenue six percent uh, were expected, but actually it is six point four eight percent. So this is the way that we see uh, there is an increase uh, in from the uh, financial perspective. Uh, then we have a, a customer perspective uh, like uh, identify attributes, client needs, uh, market share budgeted is 6%, but uh, we actually uh, performed uh, increase in 7%. Identify new groups of client, uh, quantity of new group one and the budgeted is one and the actual performance is also one. Increase focus on the client, uh, customer satisfaction, 90% give up. Uh, give top two, two ratings and 87% in actual. So uh, what we anticipate that we get 90%, but in actual we get 87%. Uh, internal business uh, process perspective. So decrease service cycle time, time to complete a job less than hour, uh, four hours, but we actually achieved less than or equal to three hours. Uh, increase quality and yield. So yield is increased uh, budgeted 78%, but it's 79.3%. So decreased delivery cycle time, order and delivery time uh, less than equal to 30 days or less than equal to 30 days. Uh, increase on time deliveries, on time uh, delivery ratio 92%, uh, but uh, actual one is 90%. Streamlining 
uh, streamlined business processes, uh, quantity of innovation five, and the actual one is also five. Improved quality control, advanced control ratio 75% and actually 75%. Uh, the last perspective, which is uh, learning and growth perspective. So uh, increased ratio of improved team performance uh, from workers' suggestions, employee satisfaction. Uh, we were expecting 80%, but in actual it is 88%. Increased frontline workers, scope of decision making ratio. So they, we involve the uh, workers in decision making process and ratio of workers decision to total decision is we anticipate 85%, uh, but it's 90%. Increased training programs, 90% uh, uh, budgeted, but 92%. Ratio of employees trained of two, two total employees. Uh, increased uh, independent data ratio of uh, real-time feedback to total process, 80% and 80%. So you see that these are, we further break down these four perspectives into different categories, and then we uh, anticipate with this uh, adoption of this strategy, how much we can uh, expect the change, and then we actually what we change. So this is the analysis, what we can do in a balanced scorecard. So this card, this uh, page uh, is called as a, a balanced scorecard page. Now, as we discussed that these all are going to contribute uh, to uh, this uh, 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 employees going to be helpful in, in uh, improvement of the process and improvement of the process helpful in customer satisfaction and customer satisfaction goes going through. Now, this is, this, is a, this is that if we perform well, then we are able to spend more in order to improve our processes because we can buy new machinery we can buy a better quality uh, equipments or processing machines right so this is the way that it works uh, this is what we call it other balance so uh, now how we can implement this to uh, in an organization uh, balance scorecard uh, scorecard implementation must have a commitment and leadership from top management if the top management decide that we want to implement this type of technique or a tool in order to evaluate the performance, uh, then there is a, a commitment that we want to implement it and must be communicated to all employees. And you have to train all the employees that what we, what tool we are going to use in future for implementation and how it's going to helpful to you to contribute in the uh, growth of the business. So that's the way that we have to give a full confidence, we have to communicate it, uh, make it transparent for everyone so that everyone is going to be participate with a full devotion and by this way they can be successful. Now, what are the story features of a good balance scorecard? Uh, tell the story of a firm strategy, articulate a sequence of cause and effect relationship. Uh, this is what I said that you have to transparently make it uh, uh, visible for every employee that what we are uh, doing. Uh, the, the link among the various perspectives that describe low, how strategy will be implemented. Help communicate the strategy to all members of the organization by translating the strategy into a coherent and linked set of understandable and measurable operational targets. So you give them a very clear that what is the target of your department, your section, your shop, your uh, whatever uh, the divisions are there so that everyone is very clearly knows. Must motivate managers to take action that eventually results in improvement in financial performance. And predominantly applies to for profit entities, but this method is uh, that how we can motivate the managers and definitely work for more work for uh, that we make more profit and motivate the employees that profit is going to be helpful uh, in, uh, in order to uh, distribute bonuses and all these things. But this can also be work for uh, work for non-profit organizations as well. Limit the number of myers, identify only the most critical ones. So it, it, it should not be so detailed that uh, people uh, feel it, that it is too complex or too detailed. So that or, or too many uh, targets uh, that is not possible to evaluate and and keep in your mind while uh, while doing this. So it should be uh, detailed and it should be concise and it should be very targeted. It should not be go into uh, too much detail. Uh, highlight less than uh, optimal trade offs that managers may make when they fail to consider operational and financial measures together. 
So that's very important that you have to tell uh, that where you have to make a trade off, uh, not to compromise on this. Now, well, when we are implementing this uh, uh, evaluation or a uh, performance evaluation techniques of a balanced scorecard, uh, there are some pitfalls as well, like uh, you can face the challenges as well. Uh, managers should not assume the cause and effect linkages uh, are precise. They have uh, a hypothesis. So we have to be make it very clear that what is the action, what is a uh, way. Managers should not seek improvement across all of the measures of all the time and should not use only objective measures, uh, must include both cost and benefits and should not ignore non-financial measures. Uh, non-financial measures are also not ignored and should not use too many measures. And managers tend to focus on performance measurement rather than uh, corporate success. So these are the uh, ways that we can uh, implement our scorecard balanced uh, evaluation strategy uh, of, uh, technique to uh, evaluate any uh, new strategy or a new uh, way that we want to do uh, introduce in our business.